Hello fans of Manchester. Welcome back again. Red Devil's eye goal machine Jaden. United are reportedly monitoring an AZ Alkmaar winger with no first team experience. Football transfers claim the Red Devils are keen on Jaden Adai, 18. He's netted 10 times and provided 4 assists in 13 matches for AZ under 19s this term. Alkmaar manager Pascal Jansen rates Adai a great talent. Jansen told De Telegraph, I hope he shows up in 30 plus games in the KKD Dutch Youth League. I hope that he can stand out there. Meanwhile, Manchester United and Arsenal are amongst Premier League giants linked to 19 year old Benfica starlet Joao Neves. Manchester City and Liverpool are also said to be interested in the midfielder, 19, who made his Portugal debut last month. 90 Min's Graeme Bailey reckons United scouted the Benfica Academy product last weekend. Bailey wrote on X, Joao Neves impresses Premier League scouts as Benfica see off sporting. Man City, Man United, Liverpool and Arsenal all checked on the Portuguese midfield starlet on Sunday. On the other side, billionaire Leon Cooperman buys stake ahead of Sir Jim Ratcliffe agreement. Sir Jim Ratcliffe is attempting to seal a deal for 25% of Manchester United, but appears to have been beaten to the punch by former hedge fund manager Leon Cooperman. American billionaire investor Leon Cooperman has secured a stake in Manchester United as Sir Jim Ratcliffe edges towards a deal. Cooperman, 80, has purchased 1 million shares in the Red Devils valued at around $16.8 million of dollars, which is 13.4 million of pounds, as per a recent filing. The founder of New York-based Omega Advisors, he is thought to have a net worth of 2.6 billion of dollars, which is 2.08 billion of pounds. The news comes amid suggestions that Enios owner Ratcliffe was closing in on a deal to invest in the club. He was one of the parties interested in completing a full takeover from the much maligned Glazer family, alongside Qatari Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani. The latter pulled out of the race, leaving Ratcliffe free to complete a deal. Negotiations are ongoing for him to buy 25% of the Old Trafford Club, and an announcement is expected soon. Once a deal is completed, the 71-year-old is expected to take full control of the footballing operations at Old Trafford. He will now also likely work in tandem with Cooperman after his own deal. Again, and again. It's confirmed that Ratcliffe could cash in on Casemiro. Casemiro could be on his way out of United Talk Sports suggest. The Bratzi midfielder arrived at Old Trafford in the summer of 2022 for pounds 70 million of pounds. He was instrumental in helping Eric Ten Hag's side win the Carabao Cup finished third in the Premier League and reached the FA Cup final last season. However, the 31-year-old has struggled to find his best form again this season, with a hamstring injury ruling him out until Christmas. And in a bid to freshen up the squad, incoming minority shareholder Sir Jim Ratcliffe will be open to letting the midfielder leave. According to TalkSport, the former Real Madrid star is being eyed up for a big-money move to Saudi Arabia. Four clubs in the Gulf state are owned by Newcastle owners PIF. This has seen a number of stars flock to the Saudi Pro League. Casemiro's departure could come along with attacking trio Jaden Sancho, Anthony and Anthony Marshall, who Sunsport revealed are all up for sale under Ratcliffe's transfer plans. The British billionaire 71 is also the owner of League One outfit Nice, for whom United target Jean-Claire Tabito currently plays. Meanwhile, former Manchester United keeper David De Gea could be set for a shock move to the Spanish second tier, according to reports. The Spaniard left Old Trafford in the summer after 12 years as his contract expired, and he was not offered another one. Since then, De Gea, 33, has been unable to find a club. Sunsport recently revealed Eric Ten Hag's men were considering a remarkable U-turn by re-signing the Spanish shotstopper. He is also said to have met with Real Betis. However, Marca say De Gea has met with Elden Sea Chiefs, a Spanish side who sit 11th in La Liga hypermotion. The keeper was in Alicante last week for a meeting with the team's bosses, as he sought to understand their project and vision. It is understood Eldens would be keen to sign De Gea. But there is also a belief De Gea's interest in the club may come in the form of ownership. Eldens president Pascual Perez recently revealed he intends to sell his majority stake. And De Gea could see the club as an attractive organization to invest in. Again, and again. Luis Saha has hit out at Mason Mount and believes he is escaping criticism. He told Betfred, I get asked a lot to comment on players, especially the likes of Rashford and Anthony, but is there some sort of protection over Mount? 
Mount should have an important role in this team, but nobody can understand his impact. In his first six months at Man United, Anthony was already under fire, so can somebody tell me why the press are okay with Mount not playing well? It seems fine that he's not playing well. Why is there not the same level of criticism for Mount than there is for Anthony? I just don't understand it. Mount should be a big player for Manchester United like Rashford or Anthony. So I don't understand why those two get the intense criticism, but Mount doesn't when he's not performing at all. He's not scoring goals, he's not assisting, and nobody's speaking about it. Meanwhile, Roy Keane should be the next Ireland manager, claims former Premier League star Dietmar Heyman. Current boss Stephen Kenny is expected to depart later this month after matches against the Netherlands and New Zealand. Keane, 52, was assistant to Martin O'Neill between 2013 and 2018, helping his country qualify for Euro 2016. With Ireland having endured a dismal few years, Haman reckons that the Manchester United legend could reinvigorate them. On the other side, David De Gea has been enjoying some time with Manchester United star Sergio Reguilón. The Spanish goalkeeper is searching for a new club since departing from the Red Devils when his contract ran out in the summer. But in the meantime, De Gea has continued to make appearances in Manchester. And last night he played Padel with his compatriot as they shared a snap on social media. Elsewhere, Rio Ferdinand thinks Rafael Varane is perplexed as to why he has fallen down the pecking order. Ferdinand said on his Vibe with Five YouTube show, We don't know. If he's on the bench, you think he must be fit. But I know that Varane is waking up, and his head has got scramblers going off it in. Because he's thinking, I've banged out five Champions League medals. I've played an integral part in all of those. I've played with the best players in the world. I've come to Man United, and Johnny Evans is starting in front of me. Again and again. After the international break, Eric Ten Hag's side will head into a tough run of fixtures, as they hope to keep their momentum going. Nobody has taken more points from their last five Premier League games than Manchester United. But it won't be easy with a packed schedule to come. So, here there are Red Devils' next five fixtures after international break. United will play with Everton, away of the ground. Sunday, November 26. United vs Galatasaray in UEFA Champions League, away of the ground. Wednesday, November 29. United play against Newcastle, way pitch, on Saturday, December 2. After United returning Manchester to play against Chelsea on Old Trafford Wednesday, December 6. Then United play against Bournemouth Saturday, December 9th, Old Trafford. On the other side, Manchester United fans slam the Glazers' shameful decision not to send a representative to Sir Bobby Charlton's funeral after the club's owners claimed they would stay away from the ceremony to avoid being a distraction. The Glazer family have been lambasted by Manchester United fans for not sending a representative to Sir Bobby Charlton's funeral. The club's American owners are said to have stayed away from the service at Manchester Cathedral on Monday, because they did not want to cause a distraction.